Yes, Asian Dub Foundation, interview for Vibes.com, interview spéciale La Haine. Donc on est ici avec Chandra Sonic euh, de As Asian Dub Foundation euh, à l'occasion du ciné-concert La Haine. On est au cinéma Jean Vigo à Gennevilliers. Uh, first, uh, how are you? I feel good, yeah, it's very nice. Ok, ok. So, uh, uh, we are here after a ciné-concert around the movie La Haine. It's a new version of a project you had since a few years. 18 years. It's not a new version. It's pretty much the same as okay. we did it 18 years ago. We play it a lot better, and mm -hmm. uh, it, technically, it's a lot more um, simpler. Mm -hmm. But it's fundamentally the same as okay. we played it 18 years ago. Mm -hmm. So 2001. Yeah. Was the first. Uh, yeah, in the Barbican in London. Yeah. And you also had a song called Line on uh, your album Enemy of the yes, Enemy. Yes, that's right. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. And so, so like us, this movie Line left uh, its mark on you. Yeah, I very guess. Much so yeah. So yeah. can you explain why? Well, I mean, it was interesting because around the time that the riot happens at the beginning of the film, Asian Dub Foundation started, and there mm -hmm. was a riot in East London. Okay. Around you know police violence. Mm similar to, to La Haine. Okay. And the piece of music that you hear that we use in La Haine mm -hmm. was a track that was written about the other police-inspired mm -hmm. riots yes. in Bethnal Green, right? Mm -hmm. So there was this uh, it, kind of synchronicity between London and Paris, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, when we came to do La Haine, that track, TH9, off the first album, just worked so well. Mm -hmm. And Macha Kasavitz himself said that, yeah, that worked really well. Okay. Because, you know, he used the Bob Marley track. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Bob Marley track is very much about the lyric. The introduction. The, the, the lyric representing what is going on. Mm -hmm. But our one is actually the sonic pace of it. Mm -hmm. is actually about the physicality of it. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so it, was, it was interesting. Kasavitz himself pointed that out. He said, oh, well, that was interesting the way you changed that. Okay. Because you actually went with the rhythm of the violence mm -hmm. rather than lyrics that describe it we went with the rhythm of the violence uh -huh. see what i mean understood yeah mm -hmm. okay so we we are not inside a, um, uh, a concert venue here but in a cinema mm. so you have other cine concert projects as uh, la bataille d'alger yes yes uh -huh. well we, we did that at the museum of immigration oh okay in uh, paris in mm -hmm. april And yeah. uh, you, you have another one, THX... Uh, yeah, yeah, one, the, 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 that one which is George Lucas' first uh -huh. film, that's science fiction. Yes, and, yeah. and so my, my question is, what yeah. is your relationship with cinema and uh, pictures in general? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> 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 you mean like why we're doing it, I suppose? Yes. Yeah, 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 okay, well this is quite a com complicated this Ooh. answer, it's got more complicated yeah. over yeah. the years. Well, yeah, so. yeah, mm -hmm. right. I know now, because Thank when you. I was 10 years old, I went on a school trip to a place called uh, Rank Xerox. Mm -hmm. um, you could join in if you want, Brian. <laughs> I think Please. that's what we have. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> no, you, you come and join in, man. Yeah. Um, I was taken there when I was 10 years old. Now, Rank, Rank was a film producing company mm -hmm. in the 1950s and 60s okay you used to see it on, on tv i don't know maybe not in france but there's some guy who used to bang a gong at the beginning and that was rank you know you remember those films yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so um so i got taken on a school trip this is like 1975 or something like that and mm -hmm. um we walked in and there was a horror film on mm -hmm. on the black and white screen huge screen and there was an orchestra okay And the guy was conducting, it was a death, it was a murder scene, like something like a psycho. And I'm like 10 years old. I'm like 10 years old. And I'm seeing, in effect, a live soundtrack, mm -hmm. right? Which is what we're doing now. Mm -hmm, yes. So it obviously made a big impression on me. Okay. Then that, I think that's a subconscious reason. Mm -hmm. That was always in me. I mean, that was one of the first things I really, wow, a performance Pictures. I saw. Yeah, I saw a live orchestra dubbing a live soundtrack, okay. you know, mm -hmm. an amazing thing to see when you're 10 years old. Okay. Seemed huge, you know, mm -hmm. quite scary as well. It was a horror film, you know. Yeah. And uh, then there was a friend of ours, someone that me and Dr. Das were in a band mm -hmm. with, actually, called Harry Kay. And he used to, and this was in the mid 90s, he in North London, mm -hmm. he used to run a club called uh, Old Films New Music. Mm -hmm. And that was a DJ, but it was quite casual. It wasn't, you know, structured and developed as, as what we did, but he used to just. DJ to films, you know, okay, and get guests in, right? 
first night I went there, Tricky was DJ too. Mm -hmm. A guy from Orbital just come in. They wouldn't plan it or anything, uh, but it was just kind of an interesting thing. Sometimes it really worked, you know. Okay. And that was then I thought, well, what would be the film that ADF could do as mm -hmm. a band? That was in 1996, I thought that. Mm -hmm. And it was obviously La Haine that sprang to yes, mind. Some yeah. movies from uh, 1995. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it sprang to mind instantly. And then five years later, we were asked to take part in... Um, this festival at the Barbican, which is a big art centre mm -hmm. in London, okay. called Only Connect. And this guy who's putting it on, Alex, he, he said, uh, oh, well, we want you to collaborate with this classical composer or something. And we listened to it, we really didn't like it at all, right? And he said, oh, well, what else are you going to do then? I said, oh, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll do a live soundtrack to La I thought, and I uh, just went away and forgot about it, you know. And I came back and... I went away and it was advertised everywhere. It was like, <laughs> so we had to force ourselves to do it, right? Okay. It was really panicky, actually. Because mm -hmm. we, 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 it was three weeks or, or something and we hadn't done it and we hadn't even spoken about it. Mm -hmm. We literally got our little machines and we sat in front of the television in my flat going, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it came together and it worked. You know, it was really, oh my God, it was a real shot in the dark. Mm -hmm. And we're still doing it. You know, it, it was, it was, not particularly thought out, mm -hmm. but when we started doing it, a, a logic emerged and it seemed to work. Mm. And the first show that we did was really stressful, but once it started and it went really well and we got amazing reviews. Mm -hmm. The first show is like 2,200 people oh. in, <laughs> in the barbecue. It was just like, <laughs> it was incredible. It was a, it was a real, I don't know. Mm. I'm okay. thinking about it now. I'm just amazed that we pulled it off. And I'm even more amazed that we're still doing it 18 years later. So we play it much, much better, mainly due to this man. Mm -hmm. All right. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's absolutely true. No, really we do. We play it so much better because right. of you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So, mm. so uh, mm. ADF is involved yeah. in many fights and struggles around the world. It's concerned about it. And they're especially concerned about mi migration matters. Uh -huh, I suppose so. Yeah. So uh -huh. you you support, for example, Extinction Rebellion. We we heard. A we song did do that. Recently. We did that song with Greta T Tumper. Oh, well, it's more like I kind of we kind of impressed with her, the militancy of her words. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether I want to get into the whole like you know, where it is now and the complexities of the arguments. I mean, I think I have certain problems with Extinction Rebellion, but I support them. I, I have certain okay. problems. So it's a uh, it's too middle class for me and mm -hmm. it, it doesn't address the problems of people lower down the scale. I think mm. that, that's the big problem. Mm. But we, uh, we yeah. understand uh, that yeah. the music is a weapon to you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I think her words were very powerful and, and, and the way she expressed it was very powerful. Mm. Yeah. Yes. And, and so uh, wh what are your feelings about nowadays riots on the globe? Uh, Middle East, Chile, uh, Hong Kong or Gilets Jaunes? What is different, for example, than uh, at the end uh, of the 90s? Oh, whew. that's a big question, isn't it? I mean, oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, each of those you have to take case by case, don't mm -hmm. you? I think, uh, well, you see, the thing is, in between when La Haine was made and now you had 9-11, uh, mm -hmm. and you had the wars in Iraq, and you had the rise of ISIS and things like this, you know what I mean? You had uh, the crash as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know whether it's really that comparable. People have asked that before, and I don't know how comparable it is you know um, I think there's always this tension between young people poor young people and the forces of mm -hmm. control and what have you that until you find a way to equalize society in that way and give people opportunity to be part of wider society you'll always have that problem but I don't think you can compare the riots in Hong Kong or you can compare mm -hmm. um, and Maybe Chile, you know, um, what's going on in Chile with the, the, the affairs, or the economic things, mm -hmm. then maybe, yeah, yeah, I think that's probably comparable. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, about Middle how East, the riot I don't know about is, that. is going on, maybe, maybe the difference is w uh, how the riot is going on, uh, people have self-defense. Um, uh, yeah, well, I'm not. I'm not an. I mean, I, I'm not a rioter. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> We're not a rioter by profession. No, but I'm concerned about that. Yeah, of course, I'm concerned. But about the actual methodology of rioting, I, I'm okay, not okay. really the person to ask. Really. Okay, okay. 
Oui. Donc, nous sommes reggae media, comme je l'ai dit, le Vibes Acom Radio yeah. Show. Donc, so l'influence de la Jamaïque est mm. obvious dans la musique ATF. Oui, bien sûr. Donc, le singer anglais Ghetto Priest est maintenant dans le line-up depuis quelques années. Oui, bien sûr. Oui, bien sûr. Oui, il a été avec nous depuis. Il a été en off depuis 1997. Il a fait notre premier big tour de France. Il a été en 1997. Je l'ai oublié. Il est sur Fortress Europe. Donc, vous savez, il est. Been pretty tight it's with this for a long time. It's a long time. So yeah. please uh, tell us how and why this music are, are so important to you and how it came to you, please. Um, how it came? Jamaican music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, when did I first? Well, I first heard it when I was a kid, actually, because mm. when the, my dad was an electrician, and all the people that he worked with are often Jamaican or. Um, Trinidadian, what have you. So whenever we went over there, we used to go. It was Wilsdon Green, North London, actually. As children, we used to go, and there was the, the the charge hand electricians that would always be playing reggae. Mm -hmm. You know, so I actually heard it inside myself quite early on. Mm -hmm. I remember Irie Feelings was the was a big hit in Britain, and that was okay. uh, that was uh, the, that's the first time I really, you know, Skanga, Skanga, Brunga, Brunga. Mm -hmm. Who did that track? Do you remember Rufus yeah, someone? Yeah. Rufus Edwards? I'm not it was sure. a hit in Britain. I'm not so sure. <laughs> yeah, but it was a hit in Britain and that I that's the first time. Hit. Wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Skanga, mm. Brunga. And it was Dubby as well, wasn't mm. it? Irie Feelings. It was great, yeah. Mm. And for example, mm. what, what is mm. your first re remember of first mm. uh, reggae hit to to uh, to make uh, to, to, enter to make a your difference. Head? Yes. Mm. Ah, I guess There was a, f a few things, but you know, of course, like a lot of people, Bob Marley had a big effect mm -hmm. on me and a certain generation mm -hmm. of people in the UK, you know, because it brought over Bob Marley and the Wailers, they, they brought a, a certain feeling. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, there's, there's many other artists, Burning Spear, etc., etc., mm -hmm. a lot of young artists, old artists, whichever, but um, uh, that's how it was first really brought to me and the philosophy and the way that Bob Marley held himself. Mm -hmm. You know, I found it interesting, but then it just opened up a whole new book to me, mm -hmm. of different. Okay. I tell you, the next time round for me, it's quite interesting, when I first started playing in bands mm -hmm. in the post-punk era. Mm -hmm. You know, reggae was in all different, all kind of different forms. Mm -hmm. Like you had the things like the specials and two-tone. Then you had experimental stuff like public image. Mm -hmm. And I think that led me to dub, you know, uh, and I remember the first first dub album I heard that I really got into was um, The Revolutionaries, which mm -hmm. was um, Sly and Robbie, yes. Burning Dub, a couple of those, and then Scientist, mm -hmm. Scientist Wins the World Cup and all those great albums. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I dived headlong into dub mm -hmm. for quite a long time, really. So then discovered Lee Perry, And then actually I had quite a, uh, a long relationship. I used to go out to sound systems where the early digital reggae, yes. when the swap over from live instruments to, you know, uh, you know, the Prince Jammy and Wayne Wonder mm -hmm. stuff and sure. amazing records like, li little known records like um, Jamming in the Street by Sugar Miner, which mm -hmm. I still play over and over again, mm -hmm. which is a digital track. It's all electronic, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Just that 84, 85. Yeah. It took over. When it took over. Yeah, it was yeah. like, sounding, I mean, it's going, it sounded like the future. Yeah. It was so futuristic, that music. Yeah. At the time, I remember hearing it. it going, good time in reggae music. Yeah, yeah but not good for the musicians, though, because there's a lot of it there, but for the yeah. us consumers, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. and, and on your last album, uh, Marcinal Marnois, you yeah. collaborate uh, one more time with... Uh, Musician and producer Ad Adrian. Yes, Sherwood. yeah, in the future, actually, yeah. Uh -huh. So, so wha yeah. what was the contrib contribution of our influence uh, Adrian Sherwood had and on your sound label? Uh, well, at, well on I mean, ADF music. Well, when I met Dr. Das, mm -hmm. the first thing we had in common was on you sound. Okay. But the first time we were around his house, we were both digging African Head Charge, Songs mm -hmm. of Praise. I'd known it before, I'd known Adrian Sherwood for a long time, mm -hmm. you know. Um, New Age Steppers, um, the Keith LeBlanc stuff and Tackhead sound mm -hmm. system and all this. Yeah, this was very big. This was really, in the 80s, mid, eight, mid to late 80s, this was big underground music. Mm -hmm. Real cutting edge stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. I saw his nights 
I think African Head Charles was probably the most consistently brilliant mm -hmm. act that he worked with and what yes. have you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, mm. t so you are in the middle of um, a tour with uh, this Lion project? Yeah. Uh, so next venues are in Germany, Holland, Poland mm. or Luxembourg? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I also read you're back in France later in March. Uh, yes, it looks that way. Yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. what is the purpose of the next tour? Is with like oh, that being a new album? Okay. Yeah, new album. And yeah. so, what about this new album? We are waiting for. <laughs> yeah, well, we are too, aren't we? Yeah. Okay. No, we did it. Kind of redid some of it, and it sounds great. So, lo looking forward to getting it out now. Okay. Really are. Yeah. So, uh, well, well, do, do you know? I when think maybe March or April. March. I okay. Think, yeah, I think it's going to go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm. And uh, did you? Uh, Uh, what is different on this album? Do, do you have a new new way? Um, Maybe not. <laughs> well, it's very much ADF, but uh, there are some new ideas on it. There are some new ideas on it, actually. Um, oh, I'll let it be a surprise. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> there are some things, like the strings, an orchestral thing that we do on okay. it. Okay. I don't think we've ever done anything much like that before. So okay, so we're in a hurry to mm. <laughs> to listen to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, to 2019 uh, is uh, also the year for reissue of uh, Rafi's Revenge, yeah, 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 your yeah, second yeah. album. Yeah. So it was uh, 98, I guess. Yes. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, you didn't get it in France. You got an, uh, you got it a year early in a different form. Oh, okay. R A F I. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm uh, glad they released that re-released that in France. It was really good. Mm, yeah. So, so you have a color vinyl, CD, and digital. For yeah, this. it's cool, isn't it? <laughs> yes, really cool, and uh, also unreleased. Yes, and, and unreleased stuff as Adrian well. Sherwood. Yeah, 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 uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's, it's really nice to have that because you because know, it's like you kind of look at it and go, yeah, that's how it should have come out the first time, <laughs> you know. <laughs> But that's wonderful. It's wonderful to, to look back, to repackage. I mean, I didn't have much to do with it as such. Um, so I got it as a complete package. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Present for you too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And, and so uh, Latin is uh, 19, 1995. Yes. Rafi's Revenge is 98. Or, mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, so 90s were such a great time. Well, they seem relatively kind of benign compared to now, don't they? <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, we were complaining and fighting then, probably fighting harder then than we are now, you know. But actually, it was, uh, I don't know, I mean, you know, pre-9-11, the world was maybe felt, maybe felt that it was possible to reshape it in a positive way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it, now it feels a lot harder mm -hmm. to be able to do that. Yes, yeah. it was easier. Well, to feel that that was possible, mm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, this this, pro this line project permitted to reunite, re reunite, excuse my English, uh, the band with original and new members? Uh, well, actually, it reunited. Do Dr. Das came back to do it. That was uh -huh. seven, seven years ago, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah so yes, that, that's true, actually. That's yeah, in a way, it rejuvenated the older spirit of ADF, I think. Mm -hmm. And can, uh, can you tell us uh, how and uh, why this particular project make you reun reunite? Well, there was, um, we'd, we did the very last La Haine, I think, in the first period, in mm -hmm. about, in Rome, okay. in 2006, I remember. And then we didn't do it for five or six years. But there was an organization called Secret Cinema, Mm -hmm. that asked us to do it and they did it at Broadwater Farm Estate where there were riots you know the London riots that happened in 2011 mm -hmm. um, and they started at Broadwater Farm Estate and, okay. and so we did La Haine there okay. which is a brilliant idea mm -hmm. you know again plugging so into a particular avenue for this movie. yeah yeah yeah, it's, yeah. It's, 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 a, it's an estate isn't it I mean, it's, it's a, a, a housing famous estate, estate yeah, famous yeah. housing estate and they've got okay. a community centre where we did the show Mm, okay, yeah. okay. And that was amazing, really, because again, it was like, yeah, there was parallels with what happened in Paris, with what happened in London mm. in 2011, you know, the London riots, and we were playing where the London riots started, mm -hmm. La Haine, so mm -mm. it was, um, yeah, very cool, very cool idea they came up with, mm -mm. and that got it all back together. Oh, all right, all right, so... Uh 
my last question was about your last album, but you, you oh, yeah. already answered. Oh, okay. You can ask it again if so, you want. <laughs> so if you have a, a last word for uh, the Vibes Acom radio show listeners, yeah. please. Hi, Vibes Acom. Uh, this is, uh, sorry, what is it again? Vibes. Vibes Acom radio show. Vibes Acom. Yes. I like that name. <laughs> Hi, Vibes Acom radio show. I'm Steve Chandra Sonic Savley, and that is... Drummer for Asian Dog Foundation, I'm Brian. Yeah. And we're wishing you all the best and you keep listening, keep watching this Definitely. wonderful program. Good show. Mm. Yes, I, thanks a lot. Yeah, pleasure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah.